Welcome to Paint and Draw Together channel. My name is Lela and today we are going to paint downy woodpecker by using black carbon ink and watercolor wash over it. So let's start with material. What I'm using here is deep pen with very very fine tip and the ink is carbon black, which is speedball carbon black made out of 100% carbon black pigment. This is waterproof ink, so once applied and given 5-10 minutes to dry, it is permanent and subsequent water layers will not dissolve it. I'm directly drawing on the paper for a few reasons. One reason, it is great practice. So you can always go with graphite and then over it go with ink and erase graphite lines. However, if you're just there to try, it's a lot of fun and you can learn a lot just by applying directly ink to the paper and as you go, gauge where your next line should be. Do not commit right away the entire contour. As you can see, I'm here dabbing the lines and applying them in rather interrupted manner so that I can actually connect them or modify as I observe and look how things are positioned. When drawing you can start either from outside and then draw smaller things inside or vice versa. In this case I started from eye and then build every shape around it adding it on, which is pretty much starting from almost the smallest detail and then adding more. In my reference, I had only bird, but it is much more interesting to add something around it. And in this case, I've chosen a wood which has hole in it, which is dug by a woodpecker, who else? And then small branch, just so it rounds the entire composition. Once the entire ink is dry, then I start applying light watercolor washes. I start with applying thalo blue at the highlighted areas, which are not completely white, and then move on applying other colors as I see them in very, very light washes and building the entire painting by applying multiple layers. Initial watercolor layers are light. It's very important to keep them quite light because that will allow that initial layer to seep inside the pores of the paper and get locked in it. And then our subsequent washes will not dissolve it. It will stay there and it will glow from under through all subsequent layers and provide that beautiful glow and a beautiful optical blending versus mechanical blending of the colors. Now when when I work on the entire painting I like to start light and paint from light to dark and sometimes just emphasize different shapes so that I know they are there and I know how warm or cold the color is. In this case, I am applying burnt umber at the areas where we have wood branches or deep crevices inside this husk and the core of the wood. Now with that first layer dried, now it's time to start to deepen the colors and apply darker colors in the areas which are more of shadow areas and also core shadow areas, which are the edges between various objects and surrounding. So in this case, this wood, woodpecker is sitting on has various indentations and some of them are quite deep 
and they serve as a breaking point for light. So once light passes that edge, then it becomes very dark shadow, which is here emphasized with sepia and also ivory black. This painting is quite detailed, which is probably more detailed than usual line and wash watercolor painting. And because of that, it takes a while to build various colors and various color layers and evaluate how dark or how light they should be. But go slow and steady and then look at how far at certain point you achieve the depth and the darkness of the color and what the color really is and then subsequently add more and more layers. Woodpecker has quite dark and quite pronounced probably half of his feathers however in watercolor watercolor is transparent so in order to achieve that deep dark black, I had to go probably four or five times, initially using ivory black, adding a little bit of magenta, adding a little bit of blue to it, and eventually finalizing it with true carbon black, which is Nitrum charcoal watercolor which you would see me using towards the end. However, here I do preserve those blue highlights or as a base between various colors in the feather and transition between them and the black. Even if the area is completely black, at the end, initially, it does have different colors as under painting, and those colors will still glow from under black and give it slight tone. Sometimes it is bluish, sometimes it's more of magenta and looks warmer, and sometimes it's hard to distinguish any color. Now I had to go again over this black area because the previous layer had dried but it's pale and I am adding different colors in that black which are strong and staining so that I build that depth in the color. Some of them are thalo green, some are ultramarine blue and some are really again ivory black. After an initial layer of paint has dried, we can observe here that the paint is not that strong. The color is quite pale. And in order to get deeper and darker color, we need to continue to apply additional watercolor layers. In addition to that, once we apply this black, it just creates very vast gap between the lightest and darkest values and in order to make the entire painting look cohesive and as one versus individual parts 
we would constantly need to adjust that span of values from the lightest to the darkest. Here I am painting background besides this tree and just suggesting it. At the back there is muted toned blue which is ultramarine blue and ivory black and at the front there is suggestion that there is a grass or meadow but only suggestion. Intentionally there I leave white areas among this blue and green because they act as sparkles and they almost suggest that there is sunlight behind and that's how the whole painting looks dynamic and alive. Now again, I'm going over this black area because again, the second, third layer dried and it's not sufficiently black. It needs additional layers. And at the end, in total, I probably applied five, six layers over this black area just so I get to that deep, dark, saturated black I'm after. Now here I'm applying light color wash over already painted area, including even dark areas, to unify the entire area and also soften the edges. By applying color layer over already dried paint, the edges which became too harsh will actually get dissolved and then the entire area would look smooth and more natural. This downy woodpecker has this very beautiful red little part at the top of the head, which is so beautiful and unusual and it does stand out. So I made sure I captured that. Now after applying a few more layers of color, you can see that the colors became richer, deeper, darker, and more vibrant. And that is the beauty of watercolor. To have patience to slowly build the intensity of the color and evaluate as you go. And here I went for something quite colorful and cheerful because I guess that's how I felt today, even though it's not completely realistic and I wasn't here after realism either. I wanted to have a painting which is vibrant, dynamic, has very emphasized colors, some of them of course not natural and real, but they sing together. They simply look as a beautiful color combination. And at the end, I'm applying a few brush strokes, suggesting there is a grass, and that will be complete painting. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and see you in the next video.